All fats are bad. Avoid them at all costs. All sugars are bad. Avoid them at all costs. Calories are calories. Doesn't matter what calories you consume, they're all the bloody same. How true are these three statements? This is what I'm going to go into in this episode of the Mind Body Health Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Mind Body Health Podcast. I hope you're good. Hope you're having a good week, good day, wherever you are in the world right now. Whatever you're aiming to do with your life, make sure again you're taking positive action. And it doesn't matter how tiny the steps are, the key is taking action. Remember, my goal in this podcast is to educate, motivate, and hopefully inspire you with the content I'll share, the guests I'll have on, and a big part of it is clearing up the confusion that's widespread because we are in a time when there has never been so much information. But unfortunately, most of that information is absolute garbage and BS. So my life is always committed to sharing the facts, sharing what works, and importantly, not just telling you the truth or the facts or what works, but most importantly, explaining to you the why. Because if you understand the why, you're most likely to do the right things. And this is something that's really key. And unfortunately, a lot of coaches and trainers and PTs and so on, they don't do that. It's nearly like military. They tell you what to do and give you a guideline, all that kind of stuff, but they don't explain the why. And the thing is, for humans from a psychological perspective, if you don't understand the why, what will happen is you go gung-ho, you're on track, everything's great, following the plan, sticking to it step by step, ticking the boxes, amazing. Life hits as it inevitably does many times. It's inevitable. When it hits, you don't feel like doing the thing you're supposed to do. You don't have that voice in your head going, but if you don't do it, this is the repercussions. You're more often than not, not going to do the thing that you're supposed to do. You don't do it one day. It's easier not to do it the second day. Then it's a week. Then it's a month and you're gone. Then eventually you'll always start back. Because everyone will always start back at some stage. No one stays off forever. This why it's such craziness and folly to, you know, to be on diets and plans and systems and all this kind of stuff and to fall off track in it. Like, as I always say, even if you're only 40, 50% on track, it's better than not being on track at all. You don't want to be going backwards, always moving forwards at wor- or at worst, stay, in, stay at the same level. Okay. Always look to progress, but at worst, stay at the same level. Okay. That's the goal. So I wanted to, on this particular episode of the podcast, briefly you know, speak about fats, speak about sugars, speak about calories, because there are three things that come up constantly. And unfortunately, most of it is driven by um, industries, industries and their agendas. Now, what's the agenda of industries? What is their motive? What is their goal? What are they? Businesses, okay? Industries are basically businesses. What's their motive? Is it money or is it your health? Which is it? It's money, right? Do you still believe it's your health, even at this stage? Even if you're a young age, you should be able to see through it. It's not really their interest to improve your health. Because the reality is, there's no profit in healthy people. Now, uh, the statement I always make is, there's no money or profit in healthy, happy people. Now, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's a fact. So for governments, it's easier to control people who are unhappy and unhealthy and don't think for themselves. For industries, that's how to make the money. Even for the health and well-being industry, which I always stress and the people are always shocked at when I state it. But if the health and well-being industry truly wanted you to change and get to where you want to be, I taught you exactly how to do it step by step by step. Everyone then would be healthy, feel good, look good, happy as a result, all that. Would they then be investing in all the new books come out every year? all the new detoxes, all the new potions and pills and supplements, systems, all that stuff. Would they be investing in those? I don't think so, would they? So this is why I'm so passionate about spreading the truth and my purpose each and every day is to do my absolute best to make a positive impact on others through, again, educating and motivating, hopefully inspiring them. And again, that's what this podcast is for, hopefully educate you. And look, it's up to you what to do. What I want is that you can make informed decisions. You may listen to some of the things I say in this podcast or other podcasts and go, that's absolute fucking BS. That's cool. That's grand. That's your perspective on it. Is that If that's what you believe, cool. We should live by our beliefs. We should live by our values. We should live by what makes sense to us, not be led by other people. Okay, and That's why I stress people, even when I'm speaking like this in podcasts or at events or webinars, whatever it might be, is look, I believe I know what I'm talking about. I believe I'm right in what I'm saying. Because again, I always look at both sides. I always look at everything and make my own informed decisions. 
and critically think and all that kind of stuff. But you have your own mind. I want you to have your own mind and I want you to live with a use of your own mind. So listen to what I say. If it makes sense, amazing. If you need to kind of further look into it, 100% do that. If you go listen to think absolute garbage, cool. Do the opposite. That's great. I would be feel it's the wrong thing to do. Because again, I feel I know what I'm talking about, but we can all be wrong sometimes, can't we? So, but remember, my, my life is dedicated to this. So again, let's touch on a few things. So let's go with, you know, starting off again, fat is fat, sugar is sugar. I'm going to count the two things together, okay? And that's what we were marketed. And it goes to what I said about the industries and profit and we're just pawns for profit and healthy, happy people make no money. So, you know, if you look at fat, there's been different phases. I'm 46 now, so I've lived nearly five decades. And in that time, there's been times when there's nothing about fat. There's been times fat has been fat is bad, need to go low fat. There's been times fat has been just vilified completely. So you have to wipe fat out completely, go zero fat. Now, what have you seen in the food industry tied in with the health and well-being industry and the supplement industry? But what you've seen is fat, move to lower fat, move to zero fat and little bits in between as well. Now, is it actually better for you? Are those products better for you? Are you better off with a zero fat product or better off with the original product? Well, the ironic thing is it's actually the original product in most cases. I'm not going to say all because there's always exceptions to everything. And there is some good products out there, but unfortunately a lot of them are just created just to serve a market. Because let's say as, as fat was being vilified and people were being becoming more conscious, so I don't want to eat too much fat now. Because look, too much fat's bad for you, but again, bad fat, and that's what I'm going to touch on especially, okay? But too much fat at the wrong time is bad for you. So you're hearing fat's bad for you, and that's what we put out there. It's never the nuances. It's never the specific information, the real important detail. That's never clarified. It's just fat's bad, okay? So if you're going to lose a certain percentage of the market, well, you're then going to lose a certain percentage of income that you've been making, and that means you're going to lose a certain percentage of profit. Okay, we can't let this happen. So let's, present, let's produce low-fat products and stress the low, low fat, and then eventually it became 0% fat and it's plastered everywhere because then people are going to move to it. So those who don't want to have full fat anything and are very scared of fat and don't want to eat fat, but they want some fat, they'll go low fat. Those who want to wipe fat out completely, they'll go zero fat. So basically they have the whole market. They still have the whole market. Those who don't give a toss, they'll eat all fat, don't care, they pay no attention. Either they don't care or they don't believe it. If the ones who are slightly conscious and the ones who are very conscious of the marketing that's put out there and I put it in vertical commas info because again it's not complete the info. So here's the reality though: we need fat. Fat's good for us. We need in reality we need hydration. We need oxygen first. We need hydration. That's the second one. Then from a nutrition point of view, we need carbohydrates, the right kind. We need in within that sugars, the right kind. We need protein, the right kind. We need fats, the right kind. We need vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, chlorophyll, all that kind of good stuff. So we do need all those things. We need fat. Having no fat is not good for you. If you don't have any fat, that's going to be very bad for your hair, your skin, your nails, a lot of that. It can be very bad for your, a lot of the internal workings and functionings of your body. Having no fat actually decreases your ability to burn fat, ironically enough. Because again, a lot of people go, huh, that doesn't kind of make sense. If I'm decreasing my fat, you're going to burn more fat. Uh-uh. Because again, you're, it's like you're switching off different processes within your body. This is why it's so important, again, to know the actual facts because too many inverted commas experts will spout things like, oh, fat's bad, stay away from it. Like you have a certain group of inverted commas experts and others and all that kind of stuff who, fat is bad, stay away from it, it's horrific. Same as like sugar. You know, no, sugar is bad for you, stay away from it. Carbohydrates, bad for you, stay away from it. They're not clarifying the exact truth. All they're doing is sensationalism. Now, maybe some of them actually truly believe what they're saying. I find it hard to believe, especially some of these people are very intelligent and they're very, their life is committed to research, all that kind of stuff. I think it's just, they're just committed to one tiny little niche or angle that's going to get them a big name. Books, all that kind of crack. Product endorsements, a whole lot. I could be wrong. I don't know. I just, there has to be some reason for it. But anyway, with the fats, so good fat is good for you. But what is good fat? Now, if you, you know, again, use your brain because there's intelligence there, right? Obviously, going to takeaways, not going to be good for you. Loads of large turn into products, not going to be good for you. So pure fat isn't going to be good for you, okay? 
that's just common sense. And a lot of the oils and stuff out there are not good for you. So pure fat, not good for you. Stuff that's fried, deep fried, triple fried, all that stuff, clearly not good for you. Doesn't mean never eat it, but not good for you. You need, need to limit it. All the confectionery and stuff, not going to have good fat in it. Again, these products are made very cheaply. The cheapest ingredients are put into them for the most profit. Remember, it's about profit. But we need good fats. Where's the good fats? Where am I going to find them? Avocados, nuts, nut butters, seeds, oils to a certain degree, like extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil. Now, the thing to remember is fat is much higher calories per gram. Okay? It's four for carbs, four for protein, nine for uh, fats. Doesn't mean you shouldn't eat these bad or these good fats, these good fat sources. Just be conscious, like any good food, if you eat too much of it and the body doesn't burn up all those calories, it has to go somewhere. So you people can get fat or gain weight from extra good food as much as they can with extra bad food. The difference with the extra bad food is it will also have other negative effects in your body, not just fat gain. So be conscious of that. So it doesn't mean you can just go, oh, okay, I'm going to have 10 avocados a day if they're so good for me, put nuts on everything. It all depends on what you're doing on a daily basis, what your overall calories are, where they're coming from, and so on. We'll touch on calories shortly as well. So I urge you, make sure you're getting fats, good fats into your daily nutrition, at least every second day or so. All it takes is a sprinkle of nuts and seeds onto your porridge or um, into your salads or into your pastas, things like that. Avocados can go in everything. It could be avocado on toast. It could be avocado on its own. It could be avocado on salads. It could be avocado, avocado on pa pasta dishes. It can be avocado in uh, stir fries, chilies, all this kind of stuff. Make guacamole. Loads of options. Really good for you. Really healthy. Great for your skin. That's where I notice a big difference in it. Like I notice even if I don't have avocados for a while, and then I do, the difference in my skin softness is amazing. So we need good fats. A big difference between bad fats and good fats. But all we ever hear is fats. Fats are bad. Stay away from fats. They're all bad. Uh-uh. Not true. Not the full truth. Good fats, bad fats. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let's jump on to sugar. It's a similar story. Sugar, carbs, whatever you want. You can look at both sides. Okay, I think I said about sugar. So let's stick to sugar um, because they're connected. So sugar is bad for you, but there's good sugar and there's bad sugar. Same thing again. Now, sugar is bad in terms of if you're having the wrong sugars, your insulin levels get really spiked. They drop dramatically. Your body will then go, OK, I need to rectify this. How did it go up last time? Oh, I ate that. You want more. That's where cravings are coming from. You throw more in. It goes really high again. It'll quickly drop because, again, the high becomes a low. Again, that is a vicious cycle that keeps happening. And that's why people who eat crappy food and lots of sweet stuff and cakes and confectionery. It is actually quite hard to stop because your body is looking for it. It's looking to rectify itself. Remember, your body doesn't want to die. It doesn't want to suffer. So whenever something's wrong with it, it does everything it can to rectify the situation. And a lot of time like that, it's having to look for the stuff it, it shouldn't look for or it's having to leach things out of your bones and minerals want to try rectify poor health choices. Okay? So sugar is not good for you in terms of what it does to your body, but it's different kinds of sugars and different impacts from different sugars. So again, take all the confectionery and cakes and biscuits and chocolates and all that stuff, not good for you. Doesn't mean never eat it. Just be conscious and aware that it's not, it's not good for you overall. Just have little bits. Same as all these um, sodas, really bad for you. Just pure sugar or artificial sweeteners and so on. Again, insulin spikes. Uh, all those alcohol pop type things, again, horrific. Just pure, pure sugar, really bad. Now, on the contrary, good sugar. And again, it's all lumped in together. Sugar's bad. Stay away from it. Like this books as famous authors and all who spend their lives dedicated to this vilifying sugar but not telling the whole truth. Fruit is sugar. Fruit of all of all would be the highest kind of sugar and would have the biggest spike in insulin levels compared to some other carbs and starch sources, which are sugar as well. But fruit's good for you. All the bands of fruit are massive. Will it spike your insulin levels? Of course it will, to some degree. But nothing like a piece of cake or a piece of chocolate or something like that. Also, I'll throw in juices. Because juices, while they're marked like they're really healthy, they're not. Because it's you've taken out the fiber. You've taken out what slowly releases the sugar, which is the key. You need it slowly release. So it's a massive insulin spike. Now, it doesn't mean never have juices, but just don't make it very regular. Don't make it common. Because... There, it's, it's like a heroin shot into the body. It's like a massive spike. Then it'll drop. Then it's looking for more. 
that's why you don't be any bit satisfied from it. That's why I always recommend smoothies to people because you've got all the fiber as well, all the nutrients, all the fiber, everything, all the good stuff. So as a result, what happens is it's slower release. You get more energy. You're satiated for longer. Um, and the food is and the nutrients are released slowly, not just instantly like with a juice. How do I give juices to someone who's really ill, who needs the nutrients ASAP? And any negative impact doesn't matter. It's about getting the nutrients in. So I would stay away from that. That would be my recommendation to you. But fruits are good for you, not bad for you. You hear different things with fruits are bad for you. They're not. Even as I heard, I heard a podcast this morning from, again, expert, let's call it, and going on about how grapes, you know, full of sugar, not good for you. Is it true that grapes release sugar more than other fruits, like berries or an apple or an orange? Yes, factually correct. But is it true that grapes are bad for you because there's sugar in them? No, it's not. A lot worse things. If you were to have a load of sweets or jellies or something, I think it'd be a lot worse. So if you need something sweet and you go with grapes, it's a lot better than a lot of stuff. So it will increase your spike, it will spike your insulin levels, but there's a lot of good nutrition in it. The good nutrition is far more important than insulin spike. Now you can slow the release a bit, but if you have it with something that you know, slows it like protein, like it could be nuts and seeds or something like that. That will slow the release of sugar. So that's, again, a strategy you can use if you are very conscious of this of the insulin spikes. But the food is good for you. The benefit is massive. The negative is just part of the processing. And I wouldn't even call it negative. It's just the way it is. And as I said, it's, it's uh, the fiber is there to slow the release. So, again, nature... Nature doesn't provide these foods to hurt us. Nature provides these foods to nourish us. And you can probably look at everything and pick out one thing that you could perceive as being negative in the way it reacts inside us. But what about all the positive impacts of how it reacts inside us? That's what's far more important. So, you know, we need to focus on these things more. And that's where, like, saying all sugars are equal. No, they're not. No, they're not. Piece of cake or a banana, will they both increase your insulin levels? Yes, they will. But the cake is giving you zero nutrients. The banana is giving you lots and lots of nutrients. Plus, as I said, the fiber is slowing the release. Also, the sugar in the cake is just pure refined garbage sugar. And there's all the other stuff. So you've got the health side of things. You've got all the excess bad fat in it. Like there's loads of extra bad things about it. That's the bigger picture. Okay. So with sugar, there's good sugar. There's bad sugar. With fats, there's good, good fats. There's bad fats. Okay. So hope that makes sense so far. And as always, just always leave comments below the episode because certain podcast platforms like Spotify allows you to put comments. Or if you watch this on YouTube, you know, do that or just contact me directly if you have questions. Because remember, I'm here to help any way I possibly can, okay? Now, so I hope that's clarified a bit more about sugar and fat and what's real and what's not real about the information that's out there. Now let's go on to calories, the third one. So calories, all calories are the same because matter what calories you have. Again, this is put out there all the time calorie count and all that as a result because the amount of calories you consume is what matters. Absolute garbage. It depends on the type of calories. Your calories for the day, let's say if you're told you need to you know, calorie restrict, calorie deficits, deficits. so the goal is that you're going to have 1,500 calories a day. Those 1,500 calories a day could be a Snickers bar, could be a juice, could be a McDonald's meal, and could be maybe a, a croissant. Now we compare that to someone having a smoothie a big, massive salad, a stir fry, and maybe porridge with a load of toppings or oatmeal, if you call it oatmeal, with a load of toppings in the morning. How can you compare those two days? They're both 1,500 calories, but one of them is giving you actual nutrition. The other is nearly void of nutrition. One is bringing lots of nutrients into your body, carbs, fats, proteins, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, chlorophyll, all these good things. The other one may be bringing in carbs, protein, or carbs, fats, things like that, but it's the bad one. So it doesn't serve your body nutritionally. So you cannot compare them. Insulin spike in one is going to be horrific. The other one, not so much. Still some, but not so much. It's going to have a huge pressure in your gut. It's not going to feed your gut. It's not going to have much fiber in it. So lack of fiber is a massive issue with your gut, which is your second brain. So you need to serve your gut by having lots of fibrous food, which is tons of fruits and vegetables. The more of them you have, the better. It's good for your health. Um, your Excretory systems can be massively affected by the one that's not nutritious. Of course, you have more regular bowel movements and healthier bowel movements, which the one that is nutritious. You cannot compare the two. That's why calories are not calories. They are not calories. It's too simplistic. There's a bigger impact by having 1,500 calories of one sort versus 1,500 calories of the other sort. 
Now, also, I'm not a fan of calorie counting because, again, it's too anal and most people will not stick to it. Go by how you feel. It's, what's most important for people is to tune into how their body feels because your body is talking to you every single day. If there's something wrong in your body, it will talk to you. You will feel it. Something will happen. Even things like rashes or spots, things in your skin, whatever, something not functioning correctly. It's your body screaming at you. You know, you're doing something wrong. Getting the colds, flus, getting diseases. Your body's telling you you're doing something wrong. Excretory system being all, sh- all over the shop. Diarrhea, all that kind of thing. Uh, constipation, something's wrong with your body. Listen to your body. Much more important to tune into your body. How is it feeling? How is it working? Is it doing what it's supposed to? Versus counting the calories you're consuming. Because most people will not do that, just like weighing your food. Now, if someone will do it, they're discipline with it, great. Like it gives you a bit more precision and scientifically, you know, you can be a bit more precise and get better results. But for most people, they're not going to stick to consistently. If you're not going to stick to consistently, there is no point in it really because there's no benefit, you know? Um, so calories, not calories. Again, let's go to the fats and the sugar examples, like an avocado versus um, a deep fried packet of chips from the chipper that's been fried in like ver- vegetable oil or something. Loads of fat in the chipper chips, loads of fat in the avocado. Are they the same? Not even close. One's really not good for you, and there's literally nothing good about it, apart from you just enjoy eating them. You get a bit of dopamine. The other one's really good for you. Good fats, good proteins, just really good healthy food, nutrition for your hair, skin, and nails. Okay? Then we go a banana and a Snickers bar or some form of chocolate bar. Are they the same? No, they're not. They might have the same calories exactly, but the impact can be completely different between one to the other. So this is why we can't just go by calories. We go by what type of calories. Where are the calories come from? What's the food source? What's the impact on the body as a result of it? So we have to stop doing that. Like I said, being realistic about people counting calories, weighing food, all of that, which, as I said, I don't believe for the majority of people that they'll ever do that, not consistently. And if they stop doing it, you see even for a day or two, they feel bad, feel they're failing, fall off the wagon, and then gone. Remember, we want long-term success. This is why I stress to people, it's about... Even if it does, even if it means you're doing it slower, you do it permanently. So every time you make positive change, it becomes a permanent one. Then you've got a long-term lifestyle that's healthy, more active, and you're constantly evolving like I'm always stressing. Focus and being committed to ever evolving. Okay. So calories are not calories. The type of calorie matters most. And just getting in a certain number of calories a day is not giving you the full picture of how it's going to impact not just your waistline, but your health and everything. Okay. Because remember, there's bigger impact on your body than just um, if, if it's good or bad and they're all the same. Good food will have good impact. Apart from, like I said, if you eat too many calories, of course it's going to convert to fat. Like that's just a reality. But it has to go somewhere. But if you have bad food of the same calories, it's going to have a bigger impact negatively on your body. Apart from the fact you're just going to gain fat. Okay? So calories are not a calorie. Hope that makes sense. So... All fats are not the same. All sugars are not the same. Just good and bad for both. All calories are not the same. And calories are not calories. Or all calories are not the same. Counting calories is not really an efficient strategy. Learn to tune it to your body. That's my belief. I think it's much better because, again, your body talks all the time. So I hope that's given you value. Hope it's clarified a few things. I would 100% welcome your questions, your feedback, your uh, comments, whether it be questioning it, whether it be supporting it, whether it be sharing your own experiences anything like that would be amazing make sure to put it below the episode wherever you're watching this or as i said contact me directly if it helps um this this podcast is all about educating you motivating you and inspiring you and i hope it does also in case you're not aware i'm currently doing every two weeks i'm doing a free that's free 100 free and live mind body health workshop where i'm going in depth for about 90 minutes about all different topics to do with your health well-being and generally living a high performing life and how to do that. A certain part of it is me educating and the big part of it is answering your questions. It's been very successful so far. As I said, it's 100% free. You also get a free gift. I won't say what it is, but you get a free gift after registering. So make sure you can get on that. It's every two weeks, usually on a Thursday at 8 p.m. UK Irish time for about 90 minutes. So jump on that. Um, and also I'm offering you a free 30-minute one-to-one coaching call if you'd like to take that. Because again, I want an opportunity to look at your life. What are you trying to do? What are your goals? And then give you a few little tips that you can um, put into action for a more high-performing life. Remember, I'm dedicated 
living my purpose, which is to make a positive impact on millions, if not billions around the world, including you. If I can help you by you listening to this, by you following my content on social media, by you reading my books, by you getting my free workshops, or by taking advantage of this free 30-minute coaching call you can get, by all means do it. Work away, knock yourself out, make it happen. Remember, if you want success, you want progress, you have to do the right things. You have to go to the right people, learn after the right people, and I believe I'm the right one. Okay, guys, I'm going to sign off on there because I don't want it to be too long. Um, hope that helps. As I said, let me know if anything doesn't or if your questions or your question, really welcome it. Have a good one. Keep taking action. Remember, every day be better than the previous day. Every week be better than the previous week. Keep that mindset and be committed to evolving the better version of you every single day. It's about living a high-performing life.